Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Mentors Guild cast, the official podcast of the Mentors Guild. I am your host, Dylan. Uh, you might know me as Turl Online, and I am here with a full team of fellow mentors to kick off our very own podcast. Um, so I'm going to hey. run through our cast here. Hey, hey. say hello. Hello. Hey, hey there, Hi. everyone. Hi, how you guys doing? Doing great. How are you? Doing? Mighty fine. Good, good. Uh, yeah, good. so we have uh, Colpreet here with us. How are you doing, Colpreet? Hi. Good. Uh, we have Sebastian. Yo. Uh, you might know him as Memento Gallery on Instagram or Twitter. Or you might uh, not. What's that? Or you might not. <laughs> That's cool. You might not, or you might not. I don't know how someone could know you if you're listening to this podcast. Oh, shit. But... <laughs> Uh, we've got Marco, also known as Shadow Marcus. Hello, hello everyone. How you doing, Marco? I'm doing great. Uh, spending a lot of time playing, watching yeah. TV series. What are you playing? Same here. Oh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're skipping too far ahead. And finally, we have uh, Six Keys. How you doing, Six Keys? Hello. And I apologize for my voice in advance because... Uh, as I said before, we started recording. My voice has been gone for almost two months. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you? Is it? Is it coming back though? It's coming back, but slowly. Okay. All right. We'll just, uh, if you know, you'll be all right. Have a couple of waters. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we are all uh, parts of uh, members of the Mentors Guild. Uh, the Mentors Guild is a uh, community coalition of uh, different Assassin's Creed community members. Uh, all across the globe. Uh, right now, we've got people uh, from Italy, uh, United States, uh, the UK. Uh, six keys. You'll have to remind me exactly which Scandinavian. Uh, Finland. Country. Finland and Finland. Um, and so we have other mentors from across across the world. Uh, but right now, we've got four different countries represented here. Um, but you know, each of us brings something different to the guild. Uh, I'm the uh, head moderator of the Assassin's Creed subreddit, which is the biggest uh, online forum based on the Assassin's Creed franchise. Colpreet, um, uh, why don't you share a little bit about uh, you know what you do for the Mentors Guild and how you contribute to the AC community? Yeah, sure. So I'm mainly on social media channels. So I am quite active on Twitter. I have been tweeting about Assassin's Creed since probably 2012. So it's been quite a long time. Um, I'm also a cosplayer too. So um, I have done quite a few AC cosplays. So I have done an Ezio one, a very, very early one. Um, Edward Kenway and possibly my favorite was Henry Green from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So yeah, um, in terms of the Mentors Guild, I originally joined as a reporter, but what I do kind of spans quite a lot of social media activity stuff. So if you follow me on Twitter, you probably know that I just talk about Assassin's Creed a lot. <laughs> so, and also... I, on, I think that's all of us here. We just tend to talk about yeah, Assassin's Creed Yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so I was actually, it's quite interesting because if do you ever look back on like your Twitter channel, like what you've been tweeting recently and I was like if I was somebody who didn't know that I liked Assassin's Creed I'd probably just go through my tweets and be like this girl just kind of needs to get a hobby <laughs> <laughs> I hear yeah. you I hear you yeah um so that's cool yeah uh do you have any upcoming cosplays you've been uh planning out or working on or anything like that um not at the moment I think um any cosplay would know that I think that cosplays can be very time consuming and I have been pretty busy recently with just personal life things going on but when I get around to doing it I know it's not a new like a new character but I would absolutely love to do Evie Fry it's one that I've always wanted to do and just did not get around to doing it I mean I think it's been going abandoning around Twitter recently the past few days because I think it's free to play at the minute honestly. oh yeah that site uh ac syndicates free to play free to get on epic game store right yeah now. that's yeah. it so i saw that and do you know what i absolutely love syndicate i think personally it's one of like the un- most underrated ac games and i loved evie fry and just the opportunity just to dress up as her and just be like badass in london would just like make my life <laughs> right <laughs> sweet well cool 
Well, I hope uh, I hope it comes sooner than later. But uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Sebastian. Yeah, what do you bring to the table? I'm bringing what aesthetics. Do you bring to the men- <laughs> your aesthetics. What do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, I do <laughs> everything that has to do with uh, visual arts. I'm I'm there. I'm photo mode, drawings, paintings, and uh, and that's it really. Uh, I started when virtual photography wasn't even didn't even have a name, and uh. And that that's why I'm here. That that's what brought me here with you guys. It's uh it's the pictures that I took in games. So what it, what made you, what inspired you to start doing virtual photography? Because like you said, it wasn't really a thing when you said mm. you started. What we were talking like, what about made you want to start just like taking pictures in a video game. Right. We were talking about most underrated AC games. <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, it's Unity for me. Oh, okay. I was, I remember, I was in a club in, um, in AC Unity. You, you, do you remember the game had clubs? It was sort of um, <laughs> online. And um, part of, uh, like, part of the people I was in, a bunch of people I was in the club were into taking pictures together. And at some point we had so many, I was like, we should, we should put them somewhere. So I made uh, an Instagram account for us. But, you know, then at some point the, the game died out. The, the the co-op wasn't playing it wasn't just there anymore people wasn't weren't playing anymore and eventually no one was uh taking part in the in that account so i was the only one left and i just kept posting and before i knew it uh people flooded in and and they were into taking pictures in ac and then ac got a photo mode and yeah well sweet yeah so i think ubisoft has you to thank then <laughs> <laughs> it is for helping I, photo I mode think, like become a thing i do think that photo mode is a is a great great tool for right. for community and and marketing too so yeah. i don't know how people i don't know how people do it like people take these amazing photos in the game and i try and they just look really kind of basic but some of the it's like some of yours are just absolutely incredible just so you just keep trying until you get good ones. I think I think photo mode in video games is actually a very very great training ground for taking actual photos in real life because after years of taking pictures in in video games not just AC I sort of developed uh the actual skills to do it in real life so it's uh, it, it does help. Well, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I had a I have a little bit of photo photography background, so it, it's 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 cool to use some of those skills in the game. It, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I my shots aren't anywhere near as good as yours, but it's all still really fun to kind of take a break from the action of you know, you know, constantly getting in fights or you know, mm-hmm. have whatnot. Uh, you know, it, it's like a whole nother part of the game. It's like a second game, a game within the game. So uh, it's really yeah. Cool. All right, we're going to move on to Marco. Marco, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Marco, you've kind of been a mainstay in the AC community since, like, I don't know, it's been a long time. What, what, yeah. what, what, what do you work on? What do you do as part of the AC community? So I am one of the admins of a fan project called Access the Animals, you might have heard of. And... Uh, um, basically, we've been around since 2013. We've been covering uh, everything uh, concerning the AC franchise, from uh, news to um, to to the lore, to the plot points, uh, collection stuff, all kinds of information to to keep every everyone updated on everything that is happening uh, on on AC. And I'd like to try and have like a hub for everyone uh, that is uh, a fan of the AC franchise. So um, our project is something that is always working behind the scenes. So even right now, like you said, what, what we are working on is we're working on uh, some upcoming reviews of transmedia because like this is what's keeping AC alive these days. And uh as usual, we're covering the news for everyone to see and uh, share their opinions about. So there's a lot of AC news and a lot of stuff that you guys put out. How many people are part of your team at Access the Animus? The team is made up of six people as of now. And uh, 
um, there's uh, we are uh, we're like we were we started as an Italian only uh, project, so we were only Italian people behind the project, and we were only creating content in Italian. But then, like a few months afterwards, we were actually asked by by fans to to share our content in English as well. So when we branched out to English, we also started to have um, other English speaking people uh, from the community that joined our project. So now there's four Italian people covering most of like um, I'm working on the news and the articles and the lore stuff. Uh, I got, I have like my lovely wife Sarah who's uh, taking care of the um, of the website. Then we have uh, Stefania who is working on the Twitter account and translating all our content. And we have uh, also Hephaestus who's working on the articles on the plot. And we have, like I said, uh, also. A uh, lovely lady called um, called Sorosis, who you might have heard of, uh, because she's a part of the Mentors Guild as well, and she's working on the on the lore articles and reviews. And then we have Mathieu, who is uh, covering the the collection pieces, and he's like one of the strongest collectors on the globe. He has everything. Yeah, and I've like seen a, a few pictures. Yeah, it's, yeah he it's has like nuts. an entire <laughs> room of his house, and it's right. filled with AC stuff. It's great. yeah. So it's it's you and uh, Sari and uh, Sor Sorosis. Sor Sor I hope that's pronounced correctly. I, I don't know. It's, sure, got a, it's always difficult to pronounce, but Soros. So you, we've got three members from Access the Animus that are part of the Mentors Guild. Yeah, uh, which is yeah. pretty cool because I, I think it's the only only uh, group that has multiple members to be part of the mentors guild. So you guys kind of bring something a little, uh, you know, a little more different than uh, a lot of us are each individuals doing our own kind of things in different little yeah. corners. But you guys have a whole team. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, a large true. part of your team, uh, you know, is part of the mentors guild. I, I think that's also because we're covering so many. Uh, yeah, yeah. That uh some of us are like uh experts on some specific topics uh, concerning the community and like the brand itself so maybe that's why we're yeah i'm um i mean sometimes i think you guys do even a better job than the brand does itself of <laughs> letting people know you know what's going on and where you can find what thing and what comes out when so yeah, we'll, you guys we're doing our been... best yes <laughs> you guys we're, have we're doing been. our best to keep everyone updated on they know like, everything i learned you know i don't from I, then before then the actual sources <laughs> yeah. oh like i God. just can't keep up yeah well if you can't keep up you can just follow up <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right well and then finally uh we have six keys with us so six keys why don't you introduce yourself a little bit <clears throat> so um I'm the mentor representing the official uh, Assassin's Creed forums. Um, I've been a member there since um, 2010, so like a whole decade. Right, yeah, um, that's a long time. And um, yeah, ever since Brotherhood, really. Um, that's uh, that's about the time I joined too, because uh, what was I remember what was funny when we met for the first time, um, and uh, when we went to Ubisoft Montreal to see AC Origins uh i we had you know met each other and i was like do you remember me on the from the forums like yeah years yeah. ago and uh yeah and, you were yeah. like making signatures uh like yeah. graphic signatures for people which they don't they don't even have anymore uh, yeah oh, they, <laughs> unfortunately gone feature uh that's all right um but yeah yeah the cool. forums so, are not really um as active anymore as they used to be but uh you know with every game of course the activity surges a little bit so i'm still kind of hanging around what's your favorite kind of thing to do on the forums i mean in general you talk about Assassin's Creed, but like what are the types of conversations or topics you like you most enjoy talking about uh i kind of try to um of course like i have my own opinions about stuff but i also try to um direct the conversation to a more constructive criticism type um, okay. Because people obviously get a little passionate about certain topics, 
and um, sometimes feelings can get a little heated. So I'm kind of trying to encourage people to like express um, their feelings, but in in a way that's respectful to the devs and to the community itself. That's that's cool to hear. Um, yeah, and so I'm I you know I relate to that a lot because I'm a moderator of Assassin's Creed uh, Reddit, which is itself a forum with its own kind of versions of that but uh you know uh making sure people stay civil and following our rules is a big part of what i do uh um, yeah. along with the rest of my moderation team you know uh, i've got three other people and we even have our own discord that we uh manage uh and but so yeah sometimes <clears throat> sometimes we also post um polls uh where fans can give their opinions about certain aspects of the series um, or, you know, asking for comments. What would you like to see in the future? Where would you like the series to go? How do you feel about transmedia? All kinds of things. Yeah. So kind we of were, encourage yeah, this engagement in the community. Yeah. We, I remember it, we, we need to bring them back soon uh, and get them going again. But for a while we had weekly uh, community discussions where we would, uh, you know, have in, invite people to talk about a specific discussion for the week. And then we would uh, be able to take, you know, those conversations and, um, you know, the community development team is able to go in and uh, kind of analyze all of that information direct from the community on very specific topics. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, I also do a little bit of fan art now and then, but I haven't posted anything in a long time. I wish time. you would do more. I've seen some of your stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, same. I didn't know she was such a great artist. I've, I've been, I've I'm been so against that. Very, like, I <laughs> have need to post more. drawn in a while. <laughs> I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to... Well, you, you, gotta, you gotta work on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, all right. So then I, I kind of talked about myself a little bit. Like I said, I'm a, a moderator of Assassin's Creed Reddit. Um, if you don't know what Reddit is, Reddit is a a uh, third party website that has a online forum for any topic you could think of. You want to talk about cats, they've got that. You want to talk about uh you want to talk about world politics, they've got that. You want to talk about cheese, they've got one for that. Yeah. You know, so there's a there's a there's a Reddit community for every topic you could possibly think of. And uh uh I am a moderator on the Assassin's Creed Creed based one. Um and I think we're at somewhere around over 200,000 subscribers right now at this point. So it's a, wow. it's a sizable community. There's a lot of posting going on. Um, and uh, it's uh, it can become a place that's not always fun to be, be in, but um, you know, we've worked hard to try and make it a, a civil place that people can come in and, you know, be friendly and, or be critical and, um, you know, share their art and, all that, uh, you know, anything you can think of that's uh, come straight from the community is it, it often finds its way onto the AC Reddit. So, yeah, uh, that's our uh, mentors for today. There's, I mean, how many others do we have? At least 10? I think we are at know, 15 more or something. Uh, 15 I think we're at 14 totally. In total. yes. yes. So what we'd love to do at this podcast going forward is to make sure that, um, we rotate mentors in and everybody, you know, if they'd like, they can come on the show and talk about, um, you know, what they've got going on currently, what the, you know, uh, talk about, uh, you know, what they like and don't like about the franchise right now. And uh, initiatives to, like giveaways yeah, and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. to get um, everybody uh, talking and, uh, you know, grab those different corners of the community and get them uh, together, which is a big part of what the mentors guild of is about. So if you guys want to, Feel free to like, uh, you know, pop in real quick, but I'm just going to talk a little bit more about the Mentors Guild. So the Mentors Guild was, was actually a Ubisoft initiative. They came to us and they said, we see this real opportunity for our, our, our community to be a little more closer knit, a little more united, a little more, um, you know, uh, like I said, grabbing those different corners and bringing them together. Um, and we also want the community to be more involved in our you know, in the way that we make games. Um, and so they came to uh, us and grabbed um, some, you know, uh, it's not, it wasn't even just people that were like, oh, these people have huge followings online. 
this person's got a huge YouTube channel. It was people that they felt were, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, just good representatives for the community and brought something unique and different to the table. And um, so it started in 2017. Uh, yep. I think everyone but Sebastian was part of the first. Uh, I was your real life. Oh, you weren't. You weren't. No, well, I'm sorry. Was Marco there. and I are second generation. Yeah, oh, second. yeah, that's second gen. I'm We're OG. OG. We're OG. Yes. yes, he was in spirit. No, he's officially. There. I was just there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then it's me, six keys. So me, six six keys, Colpre, and I think seven other mentors all met in Ubis at Moviesoft Montreal, and we um, saw an early virgin version of HC Origins and. Uh, we're able to give our feedback um, and we're able um, to kind of talk about what we wanted to see, the, how we'd like to see the community move forward and what types of cool projects we could do as part of the Mentors Guild. And since then, it's just grown and everyone's, uh, you know, we've added a, a, a second generation of members, uh, including Sebastian and Marco. And uh, this podcast is an initiative that we, you know, we came up with in that 2000, 2017 meeting. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's taken some, it's just taken a while to get it going. It's tough to get everybody in the, you know, in the same Discord channel, or, you know, uh, on a regular basis. And and meanwhile, doing all of our other normal Assassin's Creed community duties. So, so yeah. But at least, we, but at least we got it rolling now. So. So you know, you know, no pressure. It's just we work on each episode for two years to bring yeah, you the yeah. best. Actually, yeah. So this was started for the second one in 2017. <laughs> Marco and Sebastian don't know this, but they're going to be part of the Mentors Guild in 2018. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just taken two years to get this out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but we're finally doing it. So. Um, so the way this podcast is kind of going to work, it's going to be a little bit different maybe each time. Um, we'd love to have guests come onto our podcast from Unity. We'd really love to have guests come in from Ubisoft directly, you know, whether it's um, uh, people that work on the game, uh, you know, and or, you know, voice actors, you name it. We'd love to have those guests onto the show. Um, but generally speaking, we're going to have a format where we kind of introduce our guests, uh, we kind of go over what they've been uh, playing, what they've been doing, what they've been watching, uh, you know, whether it's related to AC or not. Um, I'm assuming a lot of the time it is going to be related to AC because we all just, you know, spend a lot of our time uh, doing things related to the franchise. Uh, and then we'll kind of talk about uh, recent AC news, if there is any. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll t be taking community questions. Um, so our community questions, you're going to be able to direct to uh, the, the Mentors Guild Twitter and the Instagram. So both of our tags uh, on uh, those platforms are at Mentors Guild. So on Twitter and Instagram, if you ever have a community question you want answered on this podcast, feel free to send it to at Mentors Guild on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you know, e e before each recording, I'm sure we'll send something out that says, hey, if you have, we got a podcast coming up. You got a question, uh, you know. And in two here. years, you will get your answer. Yeah, and then two years. Yeah. So the next we're doing <laughs> yeah. this one will come out. Tw so 2022 is the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have two years to prepare your questions. So, yeah. So they better be good. You have a lot of thinking time. A lot of thinking time. And we better have good answers, make it too, good. because we have, two, we have two years to prepare. So. Yeah, true. <laughs> and so, um, about the timeline, sort of, we are not currently planning on having this be a weekly or monthly thing necessarily. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just because we don't always know, obviously, when new AC news are coming out. So we're just kind of going to time them when we know that there's something interesting happening in the world of AC. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's changed a little bit. So uh, especially with Odyssey, there's been a lot more regular content coming out. So it'll be a little, hopefully in the future, it'll be a little bit easier for us to do something a little more regular. But yeah, do not expect this podcast to become something that you see every week or every month because, you know, we might not just have a lot to talk about or it's going to be tough to get, um, you know, you know, three to five of us in a Discord chat or get a guest on or what have you. 
Um, but you know, we'll do these, do our best to try to make these as uh, frequent as possible without being empty with content. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, now that we've got everybody introduced, and hopefully our, you guys got a, you know, our listeners have a better understanding of the Mentors Guild. I think we can kind of talk a little bit about um, has anybody here been, you know, playing or doing or anything related to AC lately? Lately. I've been watching news about it on Access the Animus. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's a sick plug. Sick oh plug. my god. I didn't even ask for that plug. But thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I sure. haven't been playing or watching uh but I I have been following again on Access the Animus the uh manga um yes. news that are coming this out. This is an about. Access the Animus podcast now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say that I've been reading the manga in Japanese. How is it? In Japanese? In well, Japanese? Yeah, yeah. Well, the manga Wait, has... can... No, How I can't. Can you read Japanese? I can't. You have someone to translate it. No, I I no, 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 I translate it. <laughs> you just look at the pictures. No, it's no, 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 absolutely not. I well, through a very complicated and very boring but long and long process I so what have... what you're telling me is you literally just copy paste text into google translate yeah and... yeah it's not <laughs> very <laughs> long and complicated <laughs> how, how, how do you copy paste it you have to do it manually yeah. because it's that's that's, it's that's the thing i'm not copy -pasting. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm using wow. uh, additional software mm -hmm. say, and uh to go through all the dialogue by each character and then we uh, with Sorosis, we go through the entire chapters every month because this is released monthly and has been released since October or November. And uh, oh, I yeah. thought it was I thought it just started. No, no, no. We started in November. Now we are at like um, a few days ago, chapter five was released. We have been up to date up until chapter four. And we have uh, every month we release a review, um, a non-spoiler review, then a synopsis and a, sort of like a brief analysis of what happened. And uh, oh, it's to, the, to those who might not be aware of the manga, it's about Xiao Jun, the Chinese assassin who first appeared in the animated short. Embers. Um, Embers. Feature, yeah, Embers oh, yeah. featuring Ezio. So, so, yeah, so basically this manga is... Um, well, the historical part is based on uh, Xiao Jun's story, especially the one that has been shared in, uh, in the Chronicles China game, uh, which was released a few years ago. Um, so basically, it's tracing Xiao Jun's steps uh, while she's, she's coming back to China and has to face the Eight Tigers, which is like a, uh, a group of Templars that is uh, getting their hold on China. So it's like uh, after Ember? Yeah, it's it's after Embers and uh it's basic most of it is the same story from Chronicles China, even though mm -hmm. there are some um part of the chapters that share new story for Xiao Jun and like some new characters that she she encounters. And also the manga has present day that is that takes place in 2019 and now 2000. 20 and it's... who are those characters then that are in the present day present day well present day has like the main character is called lisa yang so it's a new character okay it's a new character and she is i think 18 or 19 years old and uh basically it's sort of like uh taking some elements from the movie in that from the ac movie in that she is having like some um violent violent uh violent behaviors and stuff like that so she's going to an abstergo clinic she's got uh, like anger issues sorry she's got like anger issues yeah something like that it's uh it still has to be explained properly uh through a backstory or something like that but yeah she she has had while she was at school she has had uh violent behaviors and she had to like retire or something like that so she goes to this abstergo clinic and there's this uh, doctor called kaori kagami and she is uh well she's putting on a face saying that she's helping her to uh to overcome her issues 
but uh, really she is actually going through Xiao Jun's story to find out about a so like a quote unquote treasure, which is uh, kind of strange because uh, according like if it's not it's still not clear if they're going for the precursor box that Xiao Jun has been going for. Um, in the Chronicles China game, which Absurgo already found out about in the past, or if they're going about another treasure that is still not uh, clear what that is. But basically, that's the summary of the manga up until now. So are you, you kind of said that it was um, similar to the Chronicles story. So if someone has played the Chronicles, they're mostly getting the same story, is that what you're saying? Um, let's say 70% of that for the historical part of the game is in the manga. Okay, uh, okay. Obviously, you're missing out on the modern day. Right. Uh, obviously. So, so is this, is this, they're planning, is there plans to bring this to like an English translation at any point? I, or... I, think, I think that Amar uh, mentioned on Twitter that it's going to be translated to English and French. For now it's not like the release date hasn't been set yet and i'm i don't know how long the manga is going to run uh because um, now we are at chapter uh, four and we are basically at sequence four of the game and the game had like at least 13 sequences almost each chapter is more or less following the sequences of the chronicles china game so now Xiao Jun is leaving a port town called Macau that has been set on fire. And if you if you have played the game, you know that's uh, at the beginning. So it, that's 30% of the game. Okay. All right. So I'm curious about the modern day. Um, is Lisa or Liza, what was her name? Lisa. Uh, Lisa, is, is she directly related to Xiao Jun? Uh, because Apparently, recent games yeah. have been introducing the idea that um, people no longer, people who use the animus no longer need to be direct no, descendants. No, no, no. Actually not. Like, uh, Lisa is, a, as far as I know, she is a descendant of Xiao Jun, and they are using, at least from, the, from some of the panels uh, where, they where they showed it, they're using like an old uh, kind of animus, like the one where she is like lying and has like a visor on going across her head, like similar to the one in AC1. So it's not even the chair wow. for now. So it's yeah. the VR. Okay. Yeah, it's the VR. Old so we have what? Oh gosh, how many versions of the animus? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like every single game or, or transmedia, they change it. Like I think <laughs> even in yeah. Origins, they have the one where you just lie down on a table. Yeah, that's even different. Yeah. yeah, and then Odyssey, they went back to the VR, or, or was that new then? See, I can't even remember anything. It's all, it's all bleeding. Well, in, in Origins and Odyssey, they're using like this new version of the Animus called HR8 or something like that. Yeah, um, and they're able to use... Yeah, they're able to use DNA from... Well, Origins, they use DNA from mummies, and then Odyssey, they use DNA from a... Beer? Yep. Exactly. Maybe. I yeah, don't, okay. Yeah. That sounds close. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um well, and you cool. have the crazy claw in um, the film. Oh yeah, I know. That thing's kind of awesome, but also so, so the all, one thing I didn't understand was you're mimicking the thing of what you're doing while you're in the arm. But let's say you're running. And then the arm goes all the way out, like as far as it can. And then you just keep running. Is that what? It does? I think. Yeah, so. I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's like a tread, like a treadmill effect. Like uh, right yeah. at the end of like the claws, like as far as it can stretch, and then you're just kind of like. It's running. just barely <laughs> holding you high enough the ground off the ground, like like your dog. You're, you're like a dog or something that's being held up and. Legs are still running, but it's not touching the ground. Or, or maybe the floor either. moves as well. I didn't notice actually. Does it do that? Uh, no, it doesn't because it's just like a. What was a stone? There's what no was floor. It? I, I think it was. Aren't you? I think. I, it, well, there's sometimes they're on the floor, and then sometimes yeah. they're suspended. 
Mm-mm. <laughs> Is that some point he landed? I think we're t- thinking more deeply about it than the filmmakers were. Yeah, <laughs> as as usual, as always. All right, I'm gonna have to turn my brain off for a second then, and just try to move on. Um, but uh, yeah, so cool. Is there anything anybody else been playing or doing anything AC related? I've recently? been playing Black. Flag on the Switch. Oh, nice. Yeah, because so, that recently came out with the Rebel Collection. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't played Black Flag, well, since I completed it, kind of when it came out. So that was quite a while ago. So it was actually quite nice to kind of come back to it. Um, and, you know, I, the funny thing is, is the first thing I, I kind of realized when I was playing it was how far the games have come in terms of like parkour right <laughs> yeah generally how much they've advanced because i was kind of doing things that i would like pressing buttons and doing things that i would do in say odyssey and then like the opposite effect happened in black flag and i was just trying to kind of go back <laughs> to the black flag controls but i've had a lot of questions on social media about how well it kind of ports onto the switch um and actually, it's, it's, they've done a really, really good job. Um, handheld is still beautiful. And when you dock it and it's on the TV screen, it works really, really well. I think I've only had a couple of like sort of really minor issues. Um, sensitivity of the controls being one of them. But you can play around with the settings for that. But it's been great to go and go back and kind of like have a play again with Edward Kenway. So enjoying that. Yeah, cause I, 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 I haven't touched that one yet on the Switch, but I did do a little bit of... Uh, assassin's creed 3 which is similar ish it's it was like what came out the year before that yeah so Mm. um yeah i i i I was impressed by how good it looked on what is essentially a phone or something like that (laughs) um but uh yeah it's it's cool to kind of revisit those and did they make any changes to like any of the gameplay or anything because i know they did a lot not a lot but they did do some changes for ac3 like you could do some free aim with the bow, and they made some changes to some of the mission design. Uh, and stuff like I don't that. think they did any. Or do you the menu touch, is such yeah. ten- it's touch sensitive now. That's a little. Oh, so you can like use the touch screen on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Like if you Honestly, tap on the map I... on, on in game, the tap will uh, the map will open up. If you tap on the map, the map will open up. That's, oh. that's what I was trying to say. Oh, and yeah. they don't, they don't, obviously, they don't have the social element anymore that they had at release where you would like, <clears throat> as a community, you would have to like find white whales or something together. Mm. And, you know, because that online component is not there anymore. But I think you can still like buy the components that you need, like the white whales. You can just buy them from a store or something because some of the, Ship upgrades actually require, you know, those parts. Right. Or they might have done something where they made it so you can easier, you can find the whales on your own or something like that. Yeah, I haven't. They they, they just don't have them. Oh, they just took them out? Yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, they did that. And they they, they do have some new content, like uh, outfits. Um, they, oh, that's right. Because they added they included some, like yeah. really new ones. They have uh, Alexia's from Odyssey and um, um, Aguilar from the movie. Oh, and like Aguilar that. too. Yeah. Yeah. And Arno and um, uh, Jacob from Syndicate. Yeah, it's cool to see those like come back. It's really weird to see new games go back into the yeah. old games, but uh, that feature of like being able to put on other assassins like robes. I know has always been super popular. Like everyone really likes that feature, and every time they announce a new one, and um, you know, I've uh, there's always questions of like, is that feature going to be back in this again? And then it's just like, no, unfortunately not. It hasn't been in there since Syndicate. But I also understand or maybe that Unity. They, I don't know. They, yeah, the I series understand. is like a decade old now. They can't put every single outfit right, in. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's like, does someone have to remake those models in the new engine? Yeah. Have you? So. But I, I, I actually, I like, I, I played the original on PC, because I, I played all the games on PC. And um, I actually feel like the Switch is, like, an ideal platform for a Black Flag, which is, it surprised me. <clears throat> because the so, mis- missions are pretty short, which is ideal for the platform. Oh, uh, yeah. And um, 
I actually found the controls were interesting because on the original PC release, I often found them a little bit too easy. Um, you know, I don't know if it was just <clears throat> just me being so familiar with the controls over the years and everything, but I feel like the Switch version actually, you, you have to get, get used to this whole new control scheme and everything. So it um, um, it kind of offers that extra challenge that I wanted from the original. So when you play on PC, are you usually using a keyboard and a mouse? Yeah, pen? yeah. Oh, totally. I could never play these games like uh, that. Like, the only, to me, I, that is like... I do like... <laughs> play Origins and Odyssey are the first ones that I've played with the controller, and I think I'm going to do that going forward because the controls yeah. have changed so much. Yeah, I but think... These... I still play the originals on keyboard. Oh, I see, yeah. I think that the games... I don't know how anybody... I know there are a couple people, especially like uh, Leo K, who's a very skilled Assassin's Creed player. Uh, he plays on mouse and keyboard, but I just don't know how you could play these games without a controller. Like, and, yeah. and I'm just... the opposite because I, I, I've tried the originals on the controller, and I just find them so imprecise with the movement <laughs> stick. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, with the thumbsticks and all that. All right. Hmm. All right. So, so I think we're gonna wrap up this uh, kind of what have you been doing playing section and move on to AC news. There's not a whole lot right now AC news related. Um, we're kind of in that uh, dead area where everyone's just waiting to hear the new game announced, which I'm sure we'll probably hear some sort of announcement in the next, at least by E3. Um, you know, I would be shocked if there was no AC game this year, especially since we just had a year off. But anyways, in the meantime, there's a new, uh, the first ever Assassin's Creed audiobook releasing on February 27th called AC Gold. Um, it sounds like this was a kind of a partnership or it's a, it's an, a, yeah, a partnership with uh, Audible. So, which is a, what is it? An, it's an audio book kind of streaming service. I don't have it. Does anyone here have audio? I do. I do yet. not yet. You do not, not yet. yet. But you, um, you're planning you on it for... AC you can Gold. stream uh, audio books, uh, but also download them onto any uh, device that okay. you have. Okay. That's cool. I haven't used it, but I'm planning on using it for this. <laughs> this will be the first one. Yeah, so it sounds like this is specifically made to be an audio book. Like, I don't think... They're not doing, like, a printed version of the story, are they? Like, as I haven't heard any... As far as I know, they don't. So it's a exclusive. No, but I'm pretty sure Excess the Animus will write it down and make it available <laughs> soon enough. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but it's that it's it's like a first for the franchise, and um I'm not really familiar with how like audiobook series like I know what an audiobook is, but I've never really been part of an audiobook or a series or anything like that. Um so I'm I'm interested because it's 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 different and it's uh it's it's definitely new, and it's going to be interesting to see how they try to apply the, uh, you know, how do they apply the brand or the the franchise into a, a totally new format. But um, I mean, just looking at the cast list, though, I'm like, I'm not too worried because there's some like, there's kind of some heavy hitters in here. Like, um, mm -hmm. Riz Ahmed uh, is a Emmy winner uh, and a Golden Globe nominee. Uh, you probably I've seen him on the night of and Rogue One, um, so I've seen him in a couple of things, and I actually really like him. You know, I, just, I love his performances and uh, you know uh, those on screen uh, uh, you know movies and a night of is actually a show. But uh, I'm interested to see how he does like a voice only performance. It's gonna be uh, interesting. Yeah, I think he's playing. Well, we'll get into the plot and stuff, but we also have uh, fan favorite Danny Wallace. Uh, so Danny yes. Wallace played Sean Hastings uh, in AC1, AC2, AC Brotherhood. Uh, not, not AC1. Not oh, AC1. Oh, that's right. They didn't come <laughs> until two. Gosh. I'm like, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm like Rusty. AC, new, my AC Lord <laughs> Rusty. It's not good. I work on that. Uh, AC2, Brotherhood, Revelations 3. Three and syndicate and syndicate yeah so it's 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 also, interesting yeah. seeing, seeing that they brought him back for this because it's people have been wanting hastings and john and rebecca to be part of the franchise since they kind of left right 
Yeah. Yeah, basically, like, uh, since syndicates, people have been asking, like, are they coming back? Are they coming back? And they, uh, as characters, they came back in the Last Descendants books. That's right. But that was just a few mentions here and there, and that was that. Also, if you don't hear them or see them, it's not the same feeling, you know? Right. Are they Are they in that that board game? The Br- uh, Venice, something of Venice? Nope. Brotherhood of, Venice. Brotherhood, Brotherhood of Venice. Brotherhood of Venice. Yes. Uh, well, Rebecca should be there, if I recall correctly, and Layla will be there. Sean, I'm not sure. But we need them to be together, Sean yes. and yeah, Rebecca, they because they be. are yeah, the comic the relief. And God knows if we need relief. Yeah, they're like <laughs> R2-D2 and C-3PO. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Hastings is C-3PO. Boom. I actually have a couple of uh, audiobooks from Danny Wallace, and he has done, uh, like, he, he has narrated his own books before. So oh, I know yeah. that he, he can do that, <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to his performance. You know what he should do? He should really do a thing where you can download his voice for, like, a GPS. And he's oh, yeah. <laughs> you, I'm, I'm not going to do the impression. Okay, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Turn left, you <laughs> stupid idiots! I don't know. <laughs> that's 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 good, actually. That was no, that was really bad. <laughs> like, you useless twat! You you missed the turn. Yes. <laughs> well, we're, we're gonna have to bip this one out. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So it's interesting they brought him back. I wonder, like, I wonder if that means he might come back for like a game, like, like That'd is be it? Cool. That would be cool because it's like it'd be kind of odd to just see him come for in a, an audiobook. Nothing against you know audiobook or anything like that, but then not see him for a game. So I mean, hopefully, if really if it does cool. well, well like fans have been asking for him and Rebecca for years now. So yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, so and uh, I'm actually pretty excited about this because um, I I haven't like I have uh, one or two books from the. Uh, what what are they called? Like uh, Last Descendants, yes. and I've tried reading them, but I just don't have the attention span these days for regular books. <laughs> um, like I I like drawing or doing something else at the same time so I can listen, and um, I'm just you know really looking forward to having like a book kind of format of AC like that I can someone actually someone telling follow. a story. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. Like gold would be perfect for you. And like yeah, some of course. these books are also in the audiobook format. Like the last sentence, some of them can also be listened. Yeah, to. I think I think the second book was in audio format, but I figured like I kind of have to read the first one. I think to uh, yeah, know what's probably, going yeah. on. Yes, yes, indeed. It's yeah. weird that they only have the second one. Yeah, that's pretty strange. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it because I'm someone who listens to a decent podcast music and stuff especially like when i'm driving or at work or um i'm gonna be honest i have almost the full collection of all the ac like novels that have come out and i still have yet to read like most (laughs) of them so so it'll be nice to kind of have something that i can put on when i'm doing something else um yeah so the to round out that cast like i said we have riz riz ahmed uh danny wallace uh, Anthony Head of Buffy I'm the Vampire Slayer. Do you know who this person is? Yes. I do not. Yeah, okay. he, he was Buffy's he was, mentor. Yeah, he oh, was okay. Professor Giles. What? Yes. Who? Oh no. Like if you know. if you have watched Buffy, like the series, like he was the professor, like the the one with the glasses. And That's as, really far, cool. as far as, as I know, he's really gonna cool. be voicing. I well, think he was also in, in a few episodes of Doctor Who or Torchwood. Is is he playing? Wait, well, maybe I don't know. I was gonna say, is he gonna be playing Gavin Banks, who is nope. the no? No, he's gonna be playing Isaac Newton as far. Oh, as oh okay. that's okay. interesting. Okay, and then finally we have uh, Tamara Lawrence of Cor Corvide. And on yeah. Chesil Beach, I don't. Uh, again, I don't really know those too well. Has anybody seen any, either of those or? Nope. Familiar <laughs> with those? All right. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, if, Isaac, if you're Isaac cast... Newton wasn't wasn't there something about Isaac Newton in Rogue? In Rogue, like the box that they used. 
was there something like the you know the box Maybe it was mentioned, required electricity uh, and they said something about Isaac Newton having worked it or something? I don't remember. Ooh, the blood thickens. What happened? Yeah. Well, with that, <laughs> I mean, we'll, it's, it's been years since I played Rogue, but let's try and get into a little bit about what AC Gold is. So AC Gold, I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's literally paragraphs long, but AC Gold is a standalone tale from the Assassin's Creed universe in which we meet Aaliyah Khan, a card shark and hustler who's been dealt a rough hand in life. Surviving through her smarts and street scams, Aaliyah struggles to get by until she loses big time to a mysterious older man, Gavin Banks. So Gavin Banks is a returning modern day character. Am I correct? From the yes. Facebook long gone initiates uh story yeah. that yeah, now only what? exists it only yes. exists on access the animus so if you want to know who gavin banks <laughs> is the go access the animus yeah like he was a, uh one of the main characters for the modern day of ac initiates and it was mentioned in some audio files in ac rogue so now yeah. m- most of the people most of the fans are looking for for danny wallace and and sean coming back but like some of the hardcore fans are looking forward to Gavin as well because he he was like a main character. He was like the uh, let's say uh, the mentor, the acting mentor when William Miles was in was like uh, hiding after after Dem- Desmond was dead. So basically, Gavin was holding the Brotherhood while uh, while 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 William was grieving. Basically, so he's. He's a character that not a lot of people know, but at, at the same time, for the Brotherhood, he's a very important character. Well, I'm it's expecting crazy, an like analysis. Every, like everything is connected, isn't it? So I just love how there's always these little like crossovers in in a lot of the stuff that AC brings out. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's that's what the transmedia uh, releases are doing right now. They're sort yeah. of like covering stuff from here and there and trying to connect or, or reuse characters that haven't been covered by the games recently. I think that's a re- I think generally that's that's a really nice thing that AC does and I really like that about the franchise and I think quite a, a lot of other people do the fact that a lot of characters they don't just leave them they kind of brought in a bit later on and cuz sometimes you don't really get to see well it's kind of impossible to to kind of continue everybody's story arc um, in like one game but it's yeah, nice true. like because they did that with them um, freedom cry didn't they with adawale as well so they had like the standalone game right um mm-hmm. and yeah it's just like I, I just that's personally something i really like about ac is the fact that like these characters kind of come and go but you do get to get to know a bit more about them yeah i'm excited for it because i'm gonna be honest i don't really know much about the Initius storyline. I don't really know a lot about Gavin Banks. I know a little bit about like his significance at the time of like when the, I guess the assassins were probably at like their lowest low point. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yes. They're like, uh, there's not a lot. There's not many of them. I think most of the brotherhood was on a boat, the Altair two. two. Yes. Yeah. The two. Um, so it's going to be cool to kind of see that character and uh, you know, it's, learn more about you know who he is and um you know reintroduce him uh to people that really don't know him that well um so yeah so is is it ali is a new character though right isn't she yeah she's she's, it seems like she is a she's a brand new character um uh, she's pulled kind of out uh she's not part of the brotherhood but it, it says here that her only option to repay banks is to become an assassin so she is now being, she's joined the Brotherhood um, against her own will. So that's a different kind of take on people. Yeah, that come. it's not mm-hmm. kind of like the vengeance storyline thing. <laughs> that's been going yeah, on. so I'm Desmond not sure how I feel like... about assassins just going around recruiting people who lost at gambling. <laughs> Here's your punishment. Like, like she has no other skills. I mean, maybe he's kind of seeing it as like, oh, you're, you know, you owe me this debt and I can tell you're having a rough time. So, so you'll I'm just pay gonna, me back, but I'll me. give you somewhere to stay. I'll give you place, you know, food to eat, yada, yada, yada. Um, but, you know, maybe he's just kind of being trying to do that little mentoring thing. Maybe, you know, he's 
it's not the nicest thing to be like, you're going to repay me by becoming a part of our cult. But yeah, let's see but, how it plays out. Maybe he but, likes it. But maybe he kind of sees something in her and is able to, you know, um, you know. And it is, you know, the Oprah. assassins do need uh, people. Like, I'm guessing she's actually going to become an assassin assassin. But they do have people like Sean who are like just historians and people behind the scenes. So you do need all kinds of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so... I was going to say that actually this is not really the first time that AC has done something like this because Black Flag actually kind of had this modern day thing where you could find tapes. Um, you hacked computers and you could find this whole audio play of um, Warren Vidic zero. and Subject One or zero. Subject zero. zero. Yeah. And this whole story about the development of the Animus. Yeah, that was like it's it's not maybe it's not the first um audio story that we know about, but it's the first audio book and audio product that was released for AC. So it's 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 funny, it's gonna be funny to compare those, like the the let's say audio drama that Darby McDavid wrote in AC4 and compare it to this one. Because this one is gonna have a little more depth because the one in AC4 was around 40 minutes and this one will be four hours and 40 minutes. So, yeah, and, I, and I, I'm excited because I'm sure the production value is going to be great on it. Like, you know, there's going to be yeah. sound effects and maybe some oh, yeah, for sure. uh, ambient music and it'd be uh, a, a, a cool way to, um, you know, experience the, the story. Um, and uh, what so I'll try not to, I was about to skip ahead here, but I'll keep going okay so she does her training uh banks tells her about the centuries old battle between the assassin templars um he really it sounds like he needs her because he needs to decode a secret message inscribed on an illegal form of currency during the great recoinage of 19, 19 or 1696 so the historical part of this audiobook takes place during isaac New newton's 17th century britain um it's actually a kind of a time period that i really don't know anything about it's like it's kind of uh out there so that's uh a, one of the big reasons why i actually like the franchise a lot is they'll oftentimes pick a franchise that you might not know a lot about or um just isn't really covered in other forms of media and they'll do they'll you'll learn about it through this story in a way that's really interesting because you know i'm gonna be honest the great recoinage of 1696 doesn't sound super exciting but yeah. i know by the end of but the they're gonna hours, make it but i'm gonna be like that was awesome like why don't people <laughs> know about the great Recoinage of 1696 <laughs> like, <laughs> that's always my favorite when the franchise goes into unexpected places right, and yeah. oh yeah absolutely that's super interesting actually i just love how isaac newton is in this one like you know how all the games have like the historical kind of character. I just love how Isaac Newton is this one. And, and like looking Leonardo at the... da Vinci, he was like my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. wasn't really what people expected either, because people always knew Da Vinci as like this the old inventor. person who you know with his big beard and you know who was just known as this great Renaissance painter. But you know, in the game, he was. Just kind of Ezio's best pal and just a fun guy. A dork. Yeah, it's always fun to see their takes on these historical characters. And it's yeah. funny because, like, looking at the description, Newton will appear as warden of the Royal Mint. It's not gonna appear like as a as an inventor. Like the main feature that is described about him is like his part of the Royal Mint, his work at the Royal Mint. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, so it sounds like he's got a real kind of an authoritative position as part of the Royal Mint and maybe some someone that the protagonist might have to, I don't know. Like, I don't think they'll make Isaac Newton a Templar, but I guess, is, <laughs> do we know if Isaac Newton was a Templar? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah, so it, it, we'll, we'll kind of find out where he'll land on that kind of whole uh that battle um mm -hmm. and then it sounds like there's a couple other characters con artist and counterfeiter william shana Sh 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 
Shaloner, yes. I Shaloner? Think so. Does anyone know? Do you know who William Shaloner, Shaloner is? He's a historical character. Okay. Like he, he actually was a counterfeiter at the time. So that's an actual historical sort of like battle between Newton and Shaloner. Mm -hmm. sort of. I don't know. I something. I So there's always a twist, right? Yeah. There's somebody that you expect to be a friend and someone you don't expect to be we'll and they eventually they'll turn on you and so maybe they'll <laughs> maybe that's it could be one of these two people or it could be a different character completely um but it sounds like alia khan is going to be uh you know using the animus to relive the memories of blind assassin omar uh khaled which i think is is actually is, what i think is the most interesting part of this yeah, whole this is freaking cool yeah because my opinion it takes it takes advantage of the limitations of the audiobook. So you're going to be interacting with this world in the same way that Omar Khaled the witch, which is he can't see anything. So it's only going to be based, I mean, really for us, it'll only be based on sound, but he has other things like touch and smell and all that. Um, but then there's a, an, a, a, it sounds like he is learning from another assassin named Rose Galloway. Is that a name that we know? Uh, uh, no, I think that's a new also a new character. So mostly new characters, which is nice to see. It's actually yeah. interesting also about the blind assassin because in the games we're used to having eagle vision. That kind of, you know, oh. gives us a second sight yeah. that reveals us about thing, things about our environment and this person oh. doesn't have that or maybe has a different different form of like eagle sense that maybe he has super hearing or something. I don't know. That I would could be definitely really interesting if they have like a different form of like the standard eagle vision. So yeah, that that's a really interesting point. I didn't, I did not think of that. <laughs> I, I could definitely see this going in like a daredevil type direction. Where is it sound based? Like it sounds cause him to see through his eyes, like a sonar. Because in, in AC four, um, I think um, what's her uh, Mary Reed tells Edward that you know like you have this sense that you can hear sometimes these noises and it's, you know, like you can actually in the game, you hear like when there's a collectible nearby or something and they kind of make that an actual part of the lore. So maybe it's something like that, but he can hear sort of clues in his environment, like a spider yeah. sense. Yeah, that's actually interesting. Because mm -hmm. like maybe he'll be able to hear something or he'll be able to use he might be able to see through his sight still even though yeah. his eyes don't work he'll be able to see things other people can't and so that would be you know put him in a in a unique kind of spot but yeah i think uh i mean that's pretty much that's all we really got for now for now there's been i've seen a couple uh videos out there of you know them talking to the behind the scenes with the cast and doing it sounded like they did a couple sample readings from the actual audio book so um yeah be on the lookout for that stuff but it comes out soon february 27th that's in four days from when yeah. we're recording this <laughs> um and we might do an another episode um after we've had a chance to hear it oh yeah i'd love to do like a spoiler cast that would be great yeah that'd be nice yes yeah yeah and it would be up. great i mean we don't know yet but it would be great if we could have an interview with someone who's connected to the project but we can't say for sure yet yeah but yeah hopefully you know that was you know that was part of the reason why the mentors guild is here because it, it's a it's a lot easier easier for us to um you know have someone like that on the show we're you know we're people that um you know ubisoft knows they can trust um and uh you know we're able to bringing them in here with people that you know know the brand really well and uh know the franchise really well so i hopefully that'd be great um but and I mean, we could if if we do get to secure someone like that we will um ask the community to submit questions oh absolutely yeah yeah we'll make sure that you know um everyone's aware of you know we're having this special guest on please give us your questions uh because the community always comes up with questions you never really think you, you might not ever think of um no. but yeah that's it for ac gold um anything anybody else got anything for ac gold before we kind of uh, nope all right 
All right. Well, yeah, like I said, that comes out February 27th. It's an exclusive audible audio book. Um, and that's it for our acing news. Like you said, it's kind of a dry period right now. Not a whole lot going on. Um, and this is the part of the podcast where in the future we will be taking community questions. Uh, but as this is the very first Mentors Guildcast, we don't have any. Uh, maybe we should have asked for some. But, uh, you know, this will be, um, it could be related to specific news or a previous podcast or um, maybe about some of the experiences we've had as mentors. Um, but yeah, so if you want to send questions, send those to uh, at Mentors Guild on our Twitter or um, to our Instagram at, at Mentors Guild, maybe in the comments or direct message, what have you. Uh, so that's all we really have for uh, our first episode. How'd you guys think again? Do you think it went good? Can you believe it? it? We managed to pull it out. Like it's we all, did it. It only took us two years and a half. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> we made a we podcast. Did we did it. Very oh my god! So proud. Yeah. So um. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll be sure to do this again soon soon as yes. in we don't know as when we'll probably soon. have like we said <laughs> earlier that we're gonna have rotating mentors so it's not gonna be the same cast every episode but That's you will get still. to know some of our other members yeah yeah all right well uh so thank you guys so much for joining me uh thank thanks you for talking it's really good to talk to you guys and uh thank you yeah. all right that's it. Bye, everyone. Uh, <laughs> bye, everybody. Uh, bye. Thanks for joining us the Mentors Guildcast, and that's it. Have a good one.